I will share with you today two secrets to marketing your plugin or your piece of software, which for everyone here mostly is plugins, um, to the end users and not to developers, right? You're so close to the code, sometimes you just get in it so close that you can't see out how to get it to your users. So I'm gonna share two secrets with you. And typically the way that happens when a marketer starts telling developers what to do about this is they use this illustration of a drill. And I'm sure you've heard it before. You can even like raise your hand if you've heard it before. I'm not gonna stop telling it though, okay? So this is how it goes. It says, you're a developer, you built a drill and you wanna sell that drill now. So what you do is you start saying, I've got the best drill. It's the light, most lightweight drill, the sharpest bits in the world, and it's ergonomically fit to your hand, and on top of that, it's got a lifetime warranty. And you, that's how you move forward selling that drill. And you find out after a while that's not working very well. And the marketer says to the developer, that's because you shouldn't be selling the drill. You need to sell the hole. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I need to buy a drill. They say, I need a hole, right? See, nobody does that, right? <laughs> nobody does that. And that, that is very common advice to be told, don't market the drill, market the whole, market the result of what your software does, but it's wrong, it's wrong advice. And I promise if you stick with me for the next seven, eight, nine minutes, that I will show you why and what to do about it instead. So before we get into that, the very first secret that we're gonna talk about in just a second is that, the clicker's backwards, they already told me this too. There we go. It means nothing to be right if you're not helpful first. So before, like I said, before we get into what that means, before we unpack that, I wanna know, does anyone want a Snickers bar? And someone's gonna have to claim, oh, dang, he was quick, and I'm a good shot too. Oh my gosh, that was almost snagged. So, okay, did you know that Snickers bars and Mars bars have basically the same ingredients, right? They're chocolate, they're nougat, and they're caramel. The only difference is that Snickers have what? Peanuts, that's right. Well, when the Mars company first introduced Snickers, they had a really hard time helping the consumer differentiate between the two because the way that they marketed, marketed it was to say, Snickers has peanuts. Like that's some big huge news. Snickers has peanuts and they try and they tried to get people to understand that Snickers and Mars bars are different products altogether and that you should choose Snickers. And that went on for a long time. Sales were kind of flat until they said, you know what, let's actually talk to our people who are buying Snickers and find out why they bought it in the first place. So they did that and what they found out was that the inclusion of the peanuts for buyers of Snickers turned it from a treat, a confection, which the Mars bar was, into a whole new category for buyers. It turned it into a food product. They were reaching for Snickers when they were hungry, when they needed to satisfy their hunger, not when they wanted a treat, not when they wanted a snack. Well, as the Mars company began to really understand that, what people wanted a Snickers bar for, they repositioned the marketing of it. And that's when they came up with the slogan, Snickers satisfies. And you can see that's through, even through today, a lot of their marketing still revolves around Snickers satisfies. So what did they do? What they did, the way they made that shift was to stop selling what the customer needed, which was a candy bar, with peanuts and instead started selling what they wanted. Now here's another example, kind of more within our industry. So uh, Liquid Web, a hosting company here in the WordPress community, has a WooCommerce specific hosting. Now there's a guy that works at Liquid Web named Chris Lemma and when he sells, when he presents WooCommerce's hosting, one of their primary features is their powerful caching that's already set up in their WooCommerce hosting. But he doesn't go out and say, hey, all you e-commerce store owners, you need caching. And he doesn't even go out and say, you need a fast website, you need a fast store. Instead, he comes one further and he says, you need to make more sales. And the way to make more sales in e-commerce is to have a fast website because the slower websites have higher bounce rates and they rank lower in search. So if you want more sales, that's what the customer wants, then you need a fast website and we need to sell you caching in order to get that. And so that, that 
plugin developer, which I know it's not plugin software. Let's you know work with me here. You move from just selling the software to selling what the software does to selling what the customer wants in the first place, and that's a big shift. And I know this because I've been around long enough to see plugin marketing sites. Like I know that the majority of plugin marketing sites in the WordPress community are selling either the software itself, and then if they go one better, then they're trying to sell what it does. And almost none of you, I say this with great love, I want you to win. Um, almost none of you are selling what the customer wants in the first place. The second secret is not that. The second secret is that no matter who you're helping, no matter who you're helping. So you built this plugin, and it might have been the very best plugin in the market. It might have had like the milkiest, you know, work with me here, the milkiest chocolate, right? The creamiest nougat, the freshest peanuts. You might be right in saying that your plugin is the best, but if you can't help your customers learn how to translate it, that into what's helpful for them, you will not see sales go the way that you want them to go. And then one step further than that, the next secret is that no matter what that is that you're helping them with, it always, always tracks back to the individual person. So when marketers talk to developers, a lot of times they say, okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to go out and build your customer avatars. And you need to build these like theoretical profiles of who's buying your product. And I say, who the crap has time for fake customers, right? Like you don't have time, right? <laughs> I mean, who has time for that? Instead, you got to actually talk to your customer. You have to actually speak to your customers and find out some information. And here's an example of how that works itself out into the marketing of your software, or maybe you're even a theme designer here, um, or an agency. This really, it applies to you too. Two minutes, woo, okay, let's go. All right, so we worked with a law firm, and the law form firm said that they wanted to, um, they wanted their marketing site to be like in your face. We're gonna crush the competition, we're gonna get your loved one out of jail. And, and it was directed to the criminal, right? So, but what we found out as we worked with them that it wasn't the criminal who ever purchased from them. It was the criminal's wealthy, well-to-do, well-put-together aunt or some other family member that the family considered to have their crap together. And that person would be contacted by the family and told, can you go talk with the lawyers for us? <laughs> can you go find out what's gonna happen next? Well, that person has a very different want than this person, than the criminal. This person wants to be able to come back to their family and continue that appearance of having their stuff together, of being the one who always has the right answer. And you can see that that sales funnel that reaches that rich aunt is very different than the sales funnel that would reach a criminal, right? And they, and they would have moved forward happily with their marketing to the criminal if we hadn't stopped to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let's talk to your people. What do they actually want? What are they here for? So how do you do that? You have to get on the phone with your customer. And I mean, you get on the phone with your customer. You talk to them face-to-face, voice-to-voice. You don't rely on analytics because that can't tell you intent. And you don't rely on heat maps, again, because that doesn't tell you intent. And you don't rely on just what's coming through your support tickets because that doesn't tell you anything about what they wanted you for in the first place. So instead you get on the phone and you say, why did you choose us? What problems were you having at the time that you were looking for a solution? Did we help you solve that problem? What other problems are you having that we might be able to help you solve as well? And when you start to put these things together, that's when the sweet stuff happens for your customers and even begins to reveal new features that you need to build. Instead of you just sitting and thinking of features that might be helpful, when you actually get on the phone with your customer or take a video with them and say, hey, can I just talk to you for a little bit about this product and how we might help you? Magic begins to happen. So that person with the drill, they didn't want the drill, right? They didn't wake up and say, I want the drill. And nobody says, I want a hole, because nobody says, I want a quarter inch absence of wood or metal, right? Nobody says that. What they wanted, and the reason your drill never sold, was that they wanted a bookcase to, hang, to put their gardening books on, and they need the hole to put the shelf there, and that's why they need the drill. Or they want to keep their mother safe in the bathroom when she gets out, and she need, they need the hole to hang the grab bar, and that's what they need the drill for. So here's what I want you to remember. All of this boils down to this. You have to sell your customers what they want and then deliver what they need. What you build delivers this thing that they wanted. That's all. Angie Meeker, thank you. <laughs>
All right, so we have time for one or two questions. So who's wow. first? Yes, oh, right behind you is the mic runner. Um, on this way, yeah, in front of you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, a yeah. mic runner brings the mic so that everyone can hear the question. Okay, for sure. So what if your plugin is for you know developers who are implementing it for clients, but then also the client could also be the person purchasing it? Where do you like, uh, you know, where do you split the marketing copy between the two? So I think even in that case, you still you're looking at your developer as the as the customer in that case and saying what does the developer want this for instead of, because even developer to developer it's still really easy to just say I'm gonna I'm gonna sell you the whole because you know you should know developer what this does but that's not how marketing works marketing does not work on holes it works on emotion it works on what do I need what do what's my goal and it's it's just really easy for developers to just say okay now I'm talking to de another developer so I don't need to actually market this I can just present what it does, and they'll understand and magically purchase. And when you have two segments like that, it's okay. It is okay to have two different audiences. That's Most of us have that. Most people in WordPress, we have those two audiences. One is a developer, one is the end user. And it's okay to market to both of them, but you still have to market to the developer. It's not like you get to just cast them away and say, oh, you're a developer, so I'm not gonna market to you. I'm not gonna speak to what you want. I guess so the advice doesn't change. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the same. All right. Do we have a last question? <laughs> yes, we Don't do. Over there. <laughs> Excuse me. It's actually uh, almost as much as a, a, a comment as a, uh, as a question, but um, one of the things that I found really successful for getting a hold of your users and talking to them, if you can get their email address, we, I send an automated email that says, hey, I'm David, I'm the CEO, and in one, one sentence, could you just tell me why you signed up? And that's it. I get a ton of responses from that, and oftentimes way more than one sentence, and those lead to a lot of great conversations. So it's another idea to, uh, I think it's super important to yeah. get a hold of your users, another idea to do that. So my, my addition to that is that that is a great part of your onboarding sequence for new customers, but take it one step further and say, hey, I'm the president. Can I hop on the phone with you for a minute? There is something magic that happens when you actually speak to your customers because what that's a conversation, but it's not really two-way. It really is just the customer talking at him. Um, and he can reply, and that's okay, but it's very different when you're actually speaking to your customers and developers. A lot of us in our community are scared. They're just, we're just scared to get on the phone with customers, and it can be really scary, honestly. It can, you're like afraid they're gonna say something really terrible and awful about your software, and they're not. They're gonna tell you how much they love it and what they bought it for. Thank you very much. You're welcome.